Hello, good evening, and welcome to a new Food for Rhino webinar. Uh, today we have the pleasure to have with us uh, Flor <coughs> Dooms and Christopher Edmonds from Brixis. Flor is the beam specialist, and she will be making a live demo. And Christopher is from the product strategy team uh, at Hexagon, but uh, Brixis is now a, an Hexagon company, and he's dealing with, with BricsCAD Beam. They will present BricsCAD Beam. Uh, and how you can run Rhino and Grasshopper inside that tool. So we will see uh, today Grasshopper as an algorithmic modeler to BricsCAD BIM and some specific and very nice tools about BricsCAD BIM um, in addition to that. Uh, this webinar is being recorded, so uh, don't worry if you miss uh, some minutes because it will be available on this same link right after it finishes. And remember that there is a chat on the on the right side of the of the screen. There is a chat panel. Feel free to place there your questions, your comments, your feedback, because at the end of the webinar, during the last 15 minutes, we will have a, a discussion or a conversation, a QA session with Flor and Christopher. And then I will collect all of your questions and we'll pass this uh, to, to them. So thank you very much for being here, uh, Flor and Christopher if you want to start now. Okay, thank you, Carlos. Hello, and welcome to the webinar. It's great you can join us today. And thank you to the McNeil Europe team for hosting us today. As Carlos said, I'm Chris Edmonds. I work in the product strategy team at Brixis. Those of you that are new to Brixis, I'll give a short introduction to Brixis and our products. Brixis has been developing innovative CAD software that puts design first for over 20 years. We are a founding member of the Open Design Alliance and part of Hexagon PPM, which is part of Hexagon AB. Uh, they're a global leader in sensor, software and autonomous solutions. You might be familiar with our Leica Geosystems laser scanning technology. We help our customers solve their problems faster and optimize their workflows. All our solutions are based on .dwg file standard, which is a major advantage in cross-discipline collaboration, reducing interoperability issues and allowing the project to move from concept to manufacture and to build all in one file format. Our main product is BricsCAD. This is our affordable multi-purpose 2D and 3D CAD platform, which is both innovative and robust. BricsCAD is a continuously advancing solution featuring intelligent tools. It offers the freedom of design flexibility combined with a great user experience for maximum productivity. BricsCAD is the 3D engine that drives our BIM solution. Our BIM solution, BricsCAD BIM, provides great design tools with the ultimate freedom to design buildings without barriers created by technology. It helps to automate laborious tasks that allow you to spend more time on high value design problems. Our design first approach, high level of flexibility and automation from 3D to 2D documentation allows for a truly unique and highly efficient workflow, making it a great option for your building designs for small to medium large size projects. Today, we'll be showcasing our integration that allows Rhino and Grasshopper to run inside BricsCAD BIM. We created the seamless integration using the Rhino Inside technology. The bi-directional integration lets you move from concept to BIM in a fresh new way, unlike any other solution on the market. By this, I mean our solution has a unique ability to what I like to say, make dumb things smart. The Rhino Inside BricsCAD BIM workflow enables you to create and iterate freeform and generative designs with a unique set of tools that are embedded in the integration. Once you have your design, you can start to transform it into a data-rich building information model from within your Grasshopper script and complete your BIM workflow with BricsCAD BIM's integrated AI tools such as BIMify and Propagate that do the work for you with the click of a button saving you precious time that can be reallocated to high value project tasks. So let's see it in action. Let me pass you over to my colleague, Fleur Dooms, our BIM specialist, who will now show you the power of Rhino inside BricsCAD BIM. Thank you, Chris. 
Um, and uh, welcome everyone with uh, this webinar. And now uh, allow me to share my screen and I can dive right in and um, I can uh, say, uh, show you what Chris has already nicely introduced, uh, but now in action. So here we see the canopy that I will be exploring today. It's made with Grasshopper inside BricsCAD BIM. And it is um, made so that it's really taking advantage of the power of both Grasshopper uh, in early design uh, generative models and BricsCAD BIM, which is good at automating the rest of the workflow where you go from your conceptual model into a more um, built and production ready uh, design. So uh, let me first show you where you can find the integration. Of course, as we're in a webinar for Food for Rhino, you can find it on Food for Rhino. Um, it's actually, you will find it uh, like this. It's called Bricks Cat BIM. And you will uh, see in the text a link uh, to our generative design webpage where you can clearly see that this works together with Rhinosaurus uh, and, of course, Crosshopper to do the parametric uh, generative design aspects. And then you can also find a button which links to our plugin page. So actually what we're seeing here is a plugin on top of BricsCAD. So not your usual, usual Food for Rhino plugin that runs on top of Rhino itself, but it's actually Rhino that's kind of a plugin inside BricsCAD uh, BIM this time. And uh, if you download this, which is the connecting element between Rhino and BricsCAD, then you will uh, see uh, the same things as I will walk you through right now. But if you ever uh, need help, we have a good support team ready for you. And we also uh, have some help pages that can help you further setting up this integration. Um, all right, let's dive in. So first of all, for uh, those of you who might be familiar with uh, Rhino and Crosshopper, but not yet with BricsCAD, uh, let me show you what it looks like. So if I launch BricsCAD, um, you will see that here we have the launcher we call it. That's our start page. And there you can clearly see uh, one of the unique aspects of BricsCAD is that you can do all these uh, elements in one uh, product. So you can do 2D drafting, 3D modeling, mechanical design and BIM in one product. Uh, what does it mean? It's only one installer and you can find all these products depending on your license level. If you have the trial license, you will uh, have access to all of these in trial mode. So you will also be able to test this integration with both a trial of uh, Rhino 7 and a trial of BricsCAD BIM uh, version uh, V21. And of course, the connecting element between that. So if I launch BricsCAD, you will see how the first steps in BricsCAD look like. And you will see that it's a quite familiar interface. Uh, that's what we try to do. So uh, here you see a lot of recent files. Here you see that you can uh, activate a new drawing with a certain template attached to it or open one of your drawings on your system. So if I open a new drawing, it will uh, take me to the uh, workspace, uh, as we call it, where you can find all the ribbons and you will see the ribbon tabs here. And once your connection is successfully installed, you will also see a crosshopper tab here. So let's see it in action right now. Uh, welcome to the Bricks is Strange station, as I like to call it. It's one of our old conference models and um, it's also uh, here as a base for the webinar because I will show you a few of the capabilities of Crosshopper inside BricsCAD BIM with this uh, rail station. So, well, not with the rail station itself, but with the canopy that is not here yet. So I go to Crosshopper tab. I open Crosshopper. And the first time, normally, it will uh, load a little bit, and then you will be able to make a new script. But here, I have actually a script uh, that might already uh, have been made in Rhino, uh, in Crosshopper on top of Rhino, uh, and where I internalized the data. That is, I stored the input uh, geometry inside the script itself. 
And then I can just open this uh, old script that I might have had already in Grasshopper before. Uh, then I can open that script just like that and you will see the preview immediately. Now, why don't you see the preview now immediately? Well, it's because here there is still a, a bit of data missing. This uh, line was not internalized. But that's no problem because uh, now I can actually go to uh, the BricsCAD tab and here you will find the custom tools that also came together with the connection. So not only will you find a Grasshopper tab inside BricsCAD, you will also find a BricsCAD tab inside Grasshopper. And that's where I will start to find a correct component. So just like you have the curve component here that is normally used to input a curve by right clicking and setting a curve as input geometry for the entire flow of the rest of the script, well, now I can do the same, but I need to use a special component that recognizes the uh, curve as a BricsCAD curve. And you will see the difference if I right click on this one, it says set one BricsCAD curve, so that you can clearly distinguish the two. And then I can select the BricsCAD curve, and uh, in a matter of seconds, you will see the uh, preview if I connect this line to the, the, the native curve. So that means that actually I'm converting the BricsCAD curve into a grasshopper curve and the script runs again because it, this translation is quite uh, is, is done by the plugin itself and uh, you uh, can just input BricsCAD geometry inside a grasshopper script. So note that at this point the, grass, uh, the grasshopper script uh, when you run it without BricsCAD it will not find this data of course it will not find this component so uh, from now on this script you uh, can only use within uh, BricsCAD uh, grasshopper within BricsCAD um, but that's uh, of course because these components would otherwise not be recognized and you would get that warning inside uh, the regular grasshopper. But what is uh, the advantage of uh, using the connection? Well, it's not just that I can now input BricsCAD geometry um, and edit it like I would use would do with just um, Rhino and Grasshopper. It's uh, of course you have the same advantages uh, like you have uh, otherwise. So, for example, I can change the amount of shells to a larger number again. Um, so here you can see then uh, I have 11 shells. So yeah, that's of course an advantage um, that you can use really generative designs and you can uh, change your design according to the input parameters as you wish. But uh, what is more is that in BricsCAD, we have also the power to add BIM data inside your crossover script. So how can I show that? Well, we go to the outputs tab, um, or maybe first the preview tab, sorry. So here you see the preview geometry that's also immediately highlighted when I highlight it in uh, Grasshopper. So it's really a real-time link. Uh, Rhino is running kind of in between these two, uh, as that is how the Rhino Insight technology works but you don't really notice it if you only want Grasshopper on top of uh, BricsCAD, let's say. And what is now special about this is that this preview can be attached to a BIM data. Uh, so we have made a custom bake element. Baking is a process of turning this preview, which is still in red and which I cannot edit in BricsCAD. I, I just select what's below it. Um, and baking is a process of turning that preview into real um, BricsCAD, in this case, geometry. And uh, while doing so, since it's a special component, you can see that you can also add BIM types here. You can say that the type of this geometry that will be baked will need to be a BIM roof. And in BricsCAD, you will find it as a native DWG uh, 3D ACES solid that has the classification of a BIM roof. And that's um, here you can find all the, uh, all the classifications that you can use inside BricsCAD BIM. And that is how you can assign BIM data right away in your Grasshopper script. Thus, 
very precisely, whenever you have an element, you can map it to a specific uh, bin type upon baking. And now, how do I convert this um, preview geometry into real brick sketch geometry? Well, we also have two buttons here. One is just to link the script with the open um, DWG drawing. The other one is to bake the geometry of all the selected components. So if I do that, it will act similarly as you would have with uh, Grasshopper on top of Rhino. It would also turn the preview into real geometry. But this time I have the BrickScat options, uh, choosing a color for my canopy, for example, choosing a layer, a material even. So I can press OK. And then it will now convert the preview into real geometry, as you can see here. Now the preview and the real geometry are overlaying. So I can just um, switch off my preview for a second. And then you will see that here, there is now a roof. If I hover over it, it says a roof. But what is it exactly in BrickScat terms? It's a 3D solid with the classification type roof. Now know that in BrickScat, you can classify anything as anything. Um, for example, if something begins as a roof, goes as a wall and ends as a slab, you can choose what it should be. It's not uh, we that define it, it's the designer that defines what is the element type. And that's really unique to BrickScat that you can do this. And also in the connection, this is unique because these free flow um, elements, you can classify them as you like. So here I cho chose to classify them as a roof and these as a window. Now, if I go a little bit deeper inside BrickScat, you can see that here uh, we can see the classification of also the, the, uh, the story and the building. And uh, if we go even deeper, you can see that we have five windows here because yeah, that's what my uh, generative design, my finalized generative design looked like. Well, now I could even uh, go and change anything uh, as if it was BrickScat native geometry because it is BrickScat native geometry. And then uh, we can uh, already give our design the first impression that we would want to. So that's the first thing. Uh, you can use BIM data very early on in your generative design uh, practices. But as uh, Chris also said, you can also use the BrickScat native tools to easily classify uh, elements. So maybe not in your grasshopper script, but if we take a look at this little building next to it here, we can also see that if you don't have uh, anything classified, it will just get listed here uh, in what we call the structure browser as uh, 3D solids and block references, um, very CAD-like. And uh, what we can do then is we can go to the home tab and we can use bimify um, i will show you what bimify does it if you take a look here it uh, shows you the 3d solids and here it shows you um, the options that you have with bimify bimify is a smart ai tool that will make your dumb geometry literally the 3d solids smart so if you haven't done that in grasshopper already or if you have another part of your design that you want to transform in smart geometry like this then Bimify is the ideal tool, tool for that. And you can just uh, press OK, and it will classify the elements. It will recognize structural profiles. It will detect spatial uh, rooms, let's say, or, or spaces, um, but spatial information and, sp and spaces itself. So spatial information is uh, it's standing on building X in floor one, for example. That's spatial information. Spaces is then the rooms that it creates and sections. Um, those are literally section planes that you can later on use to automate your construction documents. So if I press OK, it will do all of this in a few seconds, even with this weird geometry. It will first do a um, throw at the classification and then it will uh, allow you to, to change it still manually if needed. So here you can see that now, instead of just solids, I have building elements and I have floor uh, zero, floor one, 
which is pretty accurate since those are blocks and they cannot be classified on one location. Then floor two, since the roof already starts on floor two, it's a reasonable guess. And here you have um, the upper floor. So uh, that's what BIMify does. And if you take a look inside uh, one of the floors, for example, floor one, you can see that there are some slabs, some doors, a stair, a wall, or multiple walls actually, and the windows we talked about earlier. So this really made my dumb blocks and solids uh, smart. And it uh, also can be done with uh, things you output it from uh, Crosshopper. But there is more to it uh, if you look to the Crosshopper BricsCAD workflow. So here we have a small little bus station, but there is uh, quite some interesting things going on. So let us recap what we've learned so far. So first of all, I right click, I set one BricsCAD curve, and I choose the curve in my model space. And here you see a generative design. Now, I'm not so happy with the slope of this roof. So what I do is uh, it's a generative script. So I just adjust the parameter to a little less in the y direction. Or yeah, the set direction. Um, so that's how I uh, adjust the first preview. And if you take a look closer, you can also see that there are um, profiles here. It's uh, sometimes a bit uh, tricky to see as it is just preview geometry at the moment. But as you will see, um, these profiles, they actually come from BricsCAD. BricsCAD has an entire profile library that you can even make with your own profiles. And you can actually select uh, these profiles to run grasshopper geometry, to drive grasshopper geometry with. And in the end, to add that BIM data of which profile it is to your uh, crossover design. So here you see I changed it into a C profile, and I can change it back to an IPE profile very easily with the drop down. Now I can also go to the output once more. And uh, as you will see, we can again bake it with some BIM data onto it. So we have columns, beams, and a roof. I bake it once more. This time it's a different design. Um, and then you will see that while I was designing in Grasshopper, I didn't really take care of the connections as it can be a quite a little more challenging task in, Brick, uh, in uh, Grasshopper, but in BricsCAD it becomes very easy because we have dedicated tools to do things just like this, to increase the level of detail from a uh, basic representation of mainly the design that you want to show to almost production or production ready uh, drawings. And um, the first step that I could uh, highlight is that uh, one of the approaches that you can do uh, of course, you could immediately exit Crosshopper from this point and start modeling further in BricsCAD. But I like to keep it uh, at the edge of the two. And that's why I designed a custom uh, C-sharp script. And in this C-sharp script, it will actually run a uh, Lisp routine on the, the moment I press this button. If you're familiar to regular CAD, then Lisp routines, uh, they allow you to very easily execute uh, known commands uh, in or, or even more difficult operations. Um, and that's what happens here. But in a sense, you could also use uh, the APIs of both uh, Rhino, Crosshopper, and BricsCAD to make really the design of your dream. You can take all the good functions and combine them together in a new a script, uh, an actual programming script then in C Sharp or Visual Basic. And then you can do um, a lot. <laughs> and um, that's uh, what I will show you now. So notice that I have here a problem with my connection, but also here and to extend for my entire bus station. And if I press this button, the Lisp routine will execute upon the press of this button. And then if we wait a few seconds, the structural connect command will have been executed in this case, uh, in this uh, script. 
And if I now uh, hide the preview, you see that it already looks much cleaner, but maybe not quite manufacturable yet. It's like a V shape inside my column at the top. I don't quite like it. Well, then we have, uh, then we can actually use parametric uh, details in BricsCAD that we already pre-stored and we can use them on our generative, um, yeah, or design that was made through a generative script, which means it doesn't always give you the same connections. Like you saw, I changed the angle of the slope and yeah, that's natural if you have a lot of variations that you are um, researching inside your design process. Well, um, that's no problem. Uh, now in BricsCAD, which is uh, unique to us, we have uh, a command called propagate, and uh, we also have a panel called the details library. And in this details library, we can store details. So previously I made one detail that looks like it might fit to this design. Um, and you might have several options uh, of a similar uh, design. So what it will do in this case, it will search for one column and two beams that uh, enter this detail object. And then it will um, propagate this type of connection to all my beams. But uh, as you might notice here, it says parametrize. And that means that it actually fits on any uh, slope of my beams that I would have made. Um, so that's very powerful in combination with generative design that you can actually take your generative design, make one detail, and then if your generative design would change in the future and you bake it once more, then you can still reuse that parametric detail since you made it, well, parametric, but then BricsCAD parametric in this case. Um, and uh, let's see it in action. So I do propagate. And the command will now search for similar locations along, uh, actually in my entire uh, drawing. And you might want to narrow it down to a certain selection set if you know uh, that you only want to apply it to a certain part of the model. But here I ran it on the entire model. And then it finds all these uh, different locations. And if we zoom in, you see that there's already a preview so what it did was actually kind of morph this uh, bolted connection to the new locations. And then with uh, just a, a click of a button, I can turn it on or off. So either I keep the, the previous design or I keep the new one. So maybe my last column uh, will have a different connection than all the rest of them. Then I uh, uncheck this one and I apply the rest um, with enter. And like uh, Chris uh, so nicely said, with the click of a button, we uh, are making our somewhat more dumb geometry smarter because we're actually increasing the level of detail um, as we need uh, on, and we can adjust it uh, on the go uh, almost. So that's uh, um, what I always find very impressive about BricsCAD is that you can just um, do this and do this well in combination with other tools like uh, Rhino and Grasshopper. So this was the bus station. And then finally, to conclude, I want to uh, tease you with some new developments we've been doing. And well, they're actually already available to you. And that's these three extra buttons that are here in the connection. What are they? Well, actually, they're um, generative details, uh, we like to call them now. Um, and that means that we can put a generative script, so a crossover script on one object and uh, or on multiple objects, we can put one script. So we can actually see a multiple scripts running simultaneously on different objects. So normally, if you're used to crossover and inside Rhino, you can only run the current script and you run it sometimes on, an, on a selection set, but you can never run the script multiple times, let's say, in one instance. And with BricsCAD, that's uh, very unique and very powerful to, for example, increase your level of detail. So here I already classified some uh, walls as curtain walls, but they don't look much like curtain walls to me yet. Um, just I know that I want these elements to be curtain walls. And 
yeah, I don't want to slow down my model or I want to turn them off, try something else. Um, so what I did was I created a grasshopper um, detail, let's say, a, a grasshopper script. And that script I can generate, I can put onto these objects uh, by pressing here, attach grasshopper data. And uh, once I've done that, it will actually make small little uh, previews from every uh, entity that's here. So here I can select a, a script that I made with the regular grasshopper connection and I open it. And now what it does, it's actually, it's actually transforming every element, every uh, solid object into the preview that would be associated with the grasshopper script. And sometimes it can be uh, a bit longer than other times. Now it was pretty fast because I have a quite performant script that makes use of meshes uh, in, in my case, but then transforms them back to BREPs uh, on the end. That's some technical side notes, but if you would like to dig into that, um, I can always elaborate further um, to you. And here, what actually happened is it's transformed all of these, um, yeah, curtain walls, I uh, classified them as curtain walls, into actual curtain walls uh, with the grasshopper script attached to it. So if I now uh, take an example here of a solid, it's still a 3D solid, but there is now a sort of data attached to it. If you're used to BricsCAD, it will feel very much like a parametric uh, object because you can just see all the properties, uh, all the parameters, uh, as we would call them in grasshopper. You see them in the properties panel. And uh, here you can change, for example, the uh, uh, X panel size from 200 to 400, uh, the approximate size, and then you will see your design react immediately. So you can actually make an entire layout like this. Um, you can also still uh, turn this visibility off, and then it will look just like your previous uh, component. So it's really designed to increase your level of detail on the fly when you need it. And um, that's where I would like to wrap up. So uh, remember, you um, can start in Grasshopper or Rhino for that matter. You can uh, elaborate further your generative design. And in some steps along the way, you want to test out some more elaborate um, in detail, higher level of detail aspects. Well, you can do it with BricsCAD and then you can even yeah, make a new design and new generative design and adapt your uh, parametric uh, details, for example, on the fly again to it. So that's uh, where I want to wrap up and want to give the word back to Chris uh, for a final outro, I guess, um, to the BricsIS site. Brilliant. Thanks a lot, Fleur. It's always amazing to see um yeah blown away every time um anyway i hope that's given you uh, a taste of some of the unique aspects of the solution and the power that it can give you and the time savings that you could achieve um as fleur said uh, and through the thing our platform has uh, flexibility all the way through it's a unique workflow from concept right through to the permitted documents um, obviously, Fleur wasn't able to show all this stuff today. And I say, as we move forward, we will be running more webinars, some of them uh, with uh, Rhino and McNeil to um, showcase that integration more, to show you more what we do, but also just the tools that are unique to BricsCAD BIM, uh, and particularly things like our automation, which I did mention at the beginning, from the 3D model into the 2D documentation um, in a way that no one else does it, time-saving, um, efficient, um, as I say, like you haven't seen, um, which is why it's important to, as I say, um, both BricsCAD and Rhino, there's uh, downloads available so you can actually trial either the individual platforms or you can um, connect them up so you can uh, reiterate and uh, uh, re reproduce what we've done today. Um, and at that, um, I hope that you've enjoyed what you've seen and started to understand and see uh, Rhino inside BricsCAD BIM for yourself. Um, so thank you and over to Carlos. Thank you very much. Excellent presentation, Flor. I, I, I really like it. I love your BIMify tool. The propagate tool, I think these are unique in, in, in BIM softwares. And also this C-sharp script uh, to clean up the steel connection. This is very smart. 
And yeah, one more thing that, that I like a lot about BricsCAD is that you can, it's not only for architectural design now with BIM, but you can also do all the mechanical parts with BricsCAD Mechanical, right? Which is like, if I'm not wrong, like an 80% of a building. So that's yeah. a really cool platform to do the entire project. And yeah, let's see if there are some questions from the audience. Uh, right now, there are no questions on the chat, but well, if someone has any question, please use the chat. Otherwise, well, just to make it um, to make it clear to the people, this connection is uh, free, right? Of course, you need a BricsCAD yeah. Beam license and a Rhino license, yeah. but the connection itself is free of charge, and you can download it from from your website. Because uh, as, as you mentioned in the beginning, uh, it doesn't show on Food for Rhino as an app because it's not a plugin for Rhino. This is the opposite case. This is Rhino and Grasshopper are plugins for Briscat Beam. Yeah. That. And no questions. So what's the what are your next plans with uh, with this connection? Are there any are you working on more and more components, I guess? We, yeah, we are. We have a, a, a really big uh, R&D team. It's, it's one of the things that we've, um, well, BricsCAD is, um, Brixis is, and also Hexagon, we're dedicated to innovation. So we um, reinvest a lot of money back into developing our products. Um, so we, we can't, we're always looking for how we can improve things. We do take a lot of feedback. So that's, that's another avenue from our customers when our customers say, you know, they, oh, they want this to happen or they, we come back and you say, if that, if we could do that, it would make our life much better. We'd save all this time. So we'll then put that back into development and have a look. So we're constantly um, both innovating the product itself and the connections that we have. So yeah, there, there will be always improvements with the product. Also with the Lakers Scanners, right? Because it's a company that belongs to Hexagon. Yes, and I that's... think I remember seeing very nice applications on, on your last uh, presidential event, Stockholm. Um, to handle these uh, large uh, large sets of, of cloud points. Yes, we um, the the platform itself can handle the point clouds. It ingests them very fast, very efficiently. We also then continue with our automation tools, so you can start to actually classify the, the point cloud into actual geometry, uh, which again is, is is unique to the platform. So that can save, as I say, a lot of time and, and efficiencies in in the use of uh, the point clouds. And as you said, um, and as I said, uh, obviously uh, Geosystems is part of Hexagon. Um, do, do we have time to show? I I was searching around sure. the yeah. morning, so. Um, let me um, share my screen. So good. It's always good to show this right now. Can I uh, do what else I need to do? What do I need to do here? Let me just click on that. Okay, right. So I can tell you what's happening here. Right. So this is the Boston Dynamics Spot the Dog, which we, is. We don't uh, see your screen, uh, eh? Christopher. We don't oh, see do your you not? Screen. Oh, do you not see it? Not, uh, not yet. You need to click oh. on that button on the share screen on the bottom. Oh, right. Here we go. Now. Are we seeing it now? Now, yes. Yes. Ah, good. Oh, right. Let's go back. See, this is this is when you do things on the fly, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it works. Right. So, yeah. So, this is the Boston Dynamics robotic dog, uh, which is now actually available to buy. They are actually retailing this. Um, and on top is Leica's <laughs> RT. C360, which is our most advanced. It's highly portable, automated, intuitive. Um, it's really produced for efficient design. Uh, one of the unique features of this is it automatically uh, records the moves from station to station. So it pre-registers all your scans from the field. Uh, so there's no manual intervention. And as I say, once you uh, would have had your scan, you would be able to then ingest that into uh, BricsCAD BIM as a point cloud and then as I say using the very specific tools that are developed in the platform start to turn this into full geometry and to start your design so if, you, if you're working on renovations you know the it, it speeds up so much um, yeah gets you done quicker um, and the other thing that's unique about us 
is one of the things with a scan of, of as built is it's normally not perfect. So with some other uh, design packages, it would force you to make the floor and the walls perfect, perfectly flat, perfectly straight. Whereas if that's not real, then that shouldn't be like that. Whereas R2 lets you do it as it really is built. Um, so you get like a true then representation, which means that when you are putting the designs onto the point cloud model that you've turned into um, geometry, you can align properly. You're, you're not forced um, by the technology again. So, yeah. But yeah, I so want that dog. Um, so, yeah. That's really, that's, cool. uh, that's really cool. I saw the dog in a, also, I think it was in a, in a in two years ago in London at the NXT uh, conference. And it is, it's amazing. I mean, it's, but now, yeah, you can add a, a camera there, scanner, and the dog makes his job, right? Yeah, it wanders around. Um, and as I say, now, now I've lost the sharing ability, so you may need to take back control, Carlos. <laughs> you need to, again, click on the share screen button. Ah, right up here. and just Or on, on the arrow. Ah, there we go. No. There you go. You can tell we're not used to using Zoom. <laughs> we use Teams, but uh, anyway, it's all good in the in the in the live events. So so yeah. So as I say, it's it, it is great technology, and they've um, as I say, I think as the years advance, uh, at the moment the battery life's like two hours, which is probably okay. But I'm sure they'll improve that as it moves forward. So, um, but yeah, the other beauty of this is is the dog can actually go where humans can't go. So with some renovation projects, they can get in. Um, and as I say, with this particular Leica scanner, um, you know, the, the data that you get back, you, you don't need as much human intervention, so. That's great. Well, we, ha we have a couple of questions. Nice. Um, we have one from Tua Hamid. Hi guys, if I were to move from Revit to BricsCAD, is there a way to import my generic model family to BricsCAD classifications? That sounds like a more technical question than um, I want to do. The, the two platforms, there's, there's similarities in them, but there's also differences. So there's some elements that we'll be able to move. So if, if they export them as DWG, obviously we'd be able to take those in or as IFC files, but native uh, Revit geometry and elements, there are things that we can do. But as I say, really the import in at the moment, I would say you'd need to, is to say, look at DWD and IFC. Um, if they're interested and want to know more, then um, yeah, maybe reach out and we can, we can get one of our people to sort of answer that more specific. But that sounds like quite a specific technical question that um, I wouldn't want to just answer on the fly. Um, well, they can... Um always visit your website and then I yeah. guess there are some forums or emails, phone, etc. right? To get the right yeah. answer. Yeah, yeah even yeah, if you... Say, if, they, uh, if they reach out. Yeah, even if you download just a trial of BricsCAD, you can get access to our customer support as well. Mm -hmm. um, so that's also an option, but um, yeah, there was some documentation about this as well uh, on our help page. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, for the specific scenarios, especially with the Revit uh, import and so on, we have to search what uh, can be done. Yeah. What's just yeah, uh, I guess it depends. Yeah, yeah, if it's mm -hmm. families or not, and the the format, no, if it's yeah, can do and, and yeah, and and, the, or... and the, yeah, and also the complexity <laughs> and there, there's so many factors mm -hmm. that that yeah. will um, influence that. Mm -hmm. One more comment from Charlie Baker. Uh, he says, I've been a Rhino user since its first launch. Okay, Th thank you, congratulations. Have not tried BIM yet. Um, Floor's presentation was a Joe Dropper. So congratulations, Floor. Uh, how do find out, do some of this? Is it through BricsCAD, Grasshopper, or Rhino? Uh, well, if you want to download this connection to BricsCAD, you need to go to the uh, BricsCAD website. And for specific questions about the connection, again, yes, you need to contact uh, the BricsCAD BIM team. Yeah. But he, says, I say, yeah. Oh, sorry. Sorry. He's, he, he adds that he's still an AutoCAD user, but considering the switch. Okay. So well, feel free to download yeah, the evaluation yeah, version of BricsCAD yeah. BIM. 
Definitely, because you'll be able to connect your current version of Rhino with the connection. So what you need to do is, as I say, download the, the trial uh, version of BricsCAD, which you'll get everything. You'll get the, the ultimate suite with that. And then the connection. Um, so that's, as I say, that'll guide you through. And then you install your BricsCAD BIM and then close it. And you have the two applications and then the, the connector will then walk you through and it will then connect everything and, and run through like just like adding another application and it will then uh, merge the two connectors together nice and the transition from autocad is really really easy to bricks cut beam <coughs> no more questions just uh, for charlie i put the help article in the chat you might need to copy paste it but um it's the help article on our uh, how you set up the integration um mm -hmm. so that's maybe useful for the watchers you put, you put it on the chat yes i think so oh, I because think so. i don't see it maybe i need to approve it somehow because ah, okay maybe maybe <laughs> you are mark you are mark as a spammer uh, <laughs> <laughs> because I don't see it. And I remember there was a button to... Mm -hmm, okay. Let me check. Yeah, well, I can also send it to Carlos and we can paste it later or something. <laughs> well, I, I put the link to the Food for Rhino page and from there they can visit your page and there it should be yeah. very easy to find the forum, etc. Yeah. One more question, this time by Sandra Marquez or Marquez. Uh, BridgeCat can be used uh, on on Mac OS system, so Mac computers. <laughs> yeah, it's a Windows and a Mac version. Yeah, there is a Windows, Mac, and Linux version. Um, though I don't know for sure if the integration will work on Mac. Uh, I don't Probably know. not, because yeah. right now Rhino Insight is only mm -hmm. for Windows. Yeah, so but we also I, have <laughs> Rhino for Mac, uh, mm -hmm. but yeah, this Rhino Insight technology. Uh, let's see if in the future we can port it to, to the Mac, but right now I think yeah. it's only for 64-bit um, um, .NET uh, applications. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so no more questions. And do you plan any conferences or any workshops soon that yes. people can attend? Yeah, we have our summit. We do. Uh, we used to do it as a live event, but last year and now this year, we'll be doing a digital summit. That is going to be in October. Uh, date still to be confirmed. So watch this space, watch um, uh, our channel. But yeah, we are producing uh, our summit, which we will then run through all the latest developments in the technology um, and introduce you to the, 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 the business. But yes, we do. We have our, our annual digital summit and that will be in October, towards the end of October. Perfect. Send me the news and I can also yep. brilliant. share it with our, with our community. That's brilliant. Thank you. Uh, Charlie Baker is asking us to, to port it to the Mac, please. <laughs> <laughs> we, we will try. I mean, right now, there, are, there is a new thing on, well, it's more compute, not, not Rhino Insight. Uh, yeah, I mean, we are studying this. It's not so, so easy, but yeah, it's, it's in our internal conversations. But right now, I cannot promise anything. Yeah. <laughs> So I think there are no more questions. Yes, one more. Okay, Kathy Hayes, your colleague, um, um, added to the chat that the D Brexit Digital Summit will be on the 26th of October. Fantastic. Charlie says that he's also a Mac user. Okay. Yeah, there are, I mean, it was already a challenge to port Rhino to the Mac. Now, the code is the same for Windows, for the Windows and the Mac version, but still with the interface, we needed to develop something internal to, because the dialog boxes and so on, it's not so easy to, to import them from the Windows version. And yeah, we hope, let's see if in the future we can also have uh, this inside technology for the Mac. Mm, definitely. So thank you very much. I, I really appreciate your, your time and your disposal. It was a great webinar. And I think that in a couple of months, we will organize a second one. Yeah. Right? 
this time. Defin- with- definitely. We're looking to get to bring a customer that will show you some live projects exactly. that they've some done. Some live projects. In the meantime, I wish you a nice summer. And I hope uh, we will also come back in September with new Food for Rhino webinars. And I think this year more than ever, we need some vacation after so many (laughs) months at home. So thanks again to you and to the audience and uh, stay healthy and have a nice evening. Bye-bye. Thanks a lot. Take care. Bye, everyone. Bye.